So, we know that the capacitance of a ceramic ferroelectric ceramic capacitor is changing with voltage. And here is a question that I asked myself some time ago, not too long ago, as a matter of fact, in the following. We know that the ESR of a capacitor is a function of size. The larger the capacitor, capacitance, the lower will be ESR. You can look at this way that to get the larger capacitor, you put a lot of small capacitors in parallel. Each one has its own ESR, so the end result will be a capacitor with a larger capacitance and a lower ESR. So my question was, that I started to think about, if you bias the capacitor, and it's becoming a lower capacitance, the capacitor. Now, is it behaving as it always behaved with the ESR, or is it now behaving with a higher ESR because it has a lower capacitance? Because smaller capacitance means lower ESR. So I started to ponder about this question. And at that time, I didn't have the instrument to do the measurement, so I contacted Omicron. You might know it's a company that makes uh, analyzers. And there's a guy I know and say, hey, can you do this measurement for me? I, I'm curious to see. And he say, wow, I have a friend who is now doing his uh, master thesis on this subject <laughs> in Austria. So I contacted a friend and said, yes, yes, I'm, I'm doing this. And he gave me some results. But unfortunately, we haven't solved the problem, so I'll, I'll explain it to you. So first of all, this is a very important question. It's not a theoretical question because, again, as I already said this, you, we use the capacitor under bias. And we want to know what will be the dissipation, so we need to know what's the ESR under bias. That, that's a very important question. Maybe it doesn't change. That's also a good, a good answer. But maybe it does, and we have to know how much. So I digged up a number of papers. And they are saying that here we have, with DC bias, ESR, the equivalent ESR is 0.3. And for the same capacitor, without DS, DC bias, it's 0 0.077, meaning that the DC bias, which in, in decreases the capacitance, here it is 45 nanofarad for DC and 200 without DC. So indeed, it behaves like a smaller capacitor with a higher ESR. OK. So as I've said, this person, Hermann Hug, who is doing his master uh, in, uh, on, on this subject at this university, and he is also working at Omicron, at my request, did some measurements. And what he, done, he did, he took a capacitor. He, excuse me, this is the capacitor. Actually, two capacitors. Biased them with the DC. These are large resistors, just not to load this capacitor. And with the network analyzer, this is the body 100 they have. This is this analyzer. This is the DC. And this is the board in which he put all these components. E and this is how it is measured with this uh, body 100 analyzer. He did the measurement. And well, he came up and said, OK, yes, with uh, 400 volt bias, the ESR goes up. And here it is. This is frequency. This is ESR. 
This is zero bias, 400, the capacitor for, I think, 600 volt, and it's really going up. This is a, by the way, a logarithmic scale, so it looks small, but it's quite a bit, and it's going up. And then there was another uh, study that I found and uh, in which they did something similar. Here, here it is, you see this is the capacitor, this is the biasing, and they did the measurement, and this is for this capacitor, and also they found that the ESR is going up with the bias voltage, and a, a lot. We're talking about tenfold, ten times larger. It's, it's a bit, it's a lot. On the other hand, a very famous company, Kemet, I'm sure whoever in power electronics knows this company, uh, has a calculator or simulator, I should say, simulator, that you can put in a device and it'll give you its characteristics. And lo and behold, and this I found later on, after he did the measurement, we did the measurement, uh, you can, with this, this is this device they have, KSIM it's called, KEMET, you can get the ESR. And you can get it under bias. And they get a lower ESR with bias. They get a lower ESR. So, I don't know, it's a very respectable company, but I did a measurement myself. So, <laughs> I know. so something is going on here. Maybe it's the same capacitor. It's the same capacitor. We are talking about the same capacitor. It's not something else. So I don't know. This is sort of a little bit open question that I have to uh, worry about, and I'll, <laughs> I'll try to explain it. I'll probably write to them. This is just uh, the last... Uh, couple of months we discovered all this thing. So uh, as of now, based on our measurement, actually four groups, I did it myself. I have now my, the analyzer myself, okay? And Mr. Ha Mr. Hug uh, from Austria did it, and also there are two papers who did it. All say that the ESR going up with DC. KSIM shows that it's going down quite a bit, again, from four, 456 to 68. That's, that's a lot. This would be very nice. I, I prefer this. <laughs> 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 but uh, I don't know. So, uh, but one should be aware. Number one, that the capacitor, capacitance is changing with voltage and not all engineers really are aware of that. And number two, that the ESR is going up. And then therefore, your estimation of losses should take this into account. Okay, let's move to the other subject, which is piezoelectricity. Also, this is a subject that there isn't much information about it. Now, what is piezoelectricity? It is a Depend, mutual dependence between mechanical forces and electrical fields. Yes, answering this. Yes, please. Is this, just for this is the uh, the ferroelectric ceramic capacitor, like X7R. All these uh, these uh, classical capacitors. Yes, yes, yes. And this is very very uh, strange. And uh, I mean, it's not strange, but but the strange thing that it is not known, because it's an important uh, information. But to a level, yeah, as I have said, I did it uh, with a student of mine, uh, Mr. Hagen Omicron did it, and then um, uh, there are two papers who showed it, shows it, and only thing uh, came it is a very respectable company. I mean, it's that. They have a lot of experience. I don't understand. I, I'm going to contact them. I didn't have a chance to do that. Okay. Maybe next year we'll uh, yeah. find the answer. Yes. But is it well known for film no, no, absolutely. I, I have information about film current. No, absolutely not. Absolutely. No. So, 
Piezoelectricity is, is a, a mutual uh, relationship between mechanical force and electric field. And we know there are PZT type materials, which are also ceramics, which are used a lot in sonar. Uh, even there were some transformers, piezoelectric transformers, etc. Now, ferroelectric material has piezoelectric effect. That is, when you expose it to electric field, it'll compress, and vice versa. If uh, you compress it, you in fact can get uh, electric field. Why is it important? It's important for two reasons. One, annoying. There are some cases that people have uh, reported that the PCB started to sing, started to uh, you know, <laughs> uh, emit audio. Uh, so this is very annoying. Secondly, if you hit resonances, this could cause cracks. This could cause cracks. In fact, one way to discover cracks in piezoelectric material or ca capacitor is to use piezoelectricity because for the capacitor without cracks, there is a certain picture of the resonances. With cracks, the picture is changing a lot. So by this, you can say if a capacitor is exposed to cracks. This is a method for testing capacitor. OK, so we have multiple resonant frequency. Now, I don't, there isn't much information about it, OK? Just, uh, I'm just giving you whatever is available today. One is a, actually a paper by Kemet, and they did some experiment. They put capacitor on a board put it in a on a cha chamber, it's an audio enclosed enclosure, excite the uh, ceramic, ceramic capacitors, these are here, here, and with a microphone uh, detected the audio emitting from it. And here are the results. Then you see that uh, you, you get audio, this is in dB, SP units, uh, which is increasing as the voltage is increasing, this is at 1 kilohertz, and this is 10 kilohertz. There are, it has nothing to do with resonance here. It is just when you compress it forcefully, it'll compress. When you impose a voltage on it, it'll compress, and then uh, uh, you know, emit the audio as a result of this, these changes. <coughs> so this is an experiment they did doesn't mean much except for just showing that indeed you get audio out of the capacitors. Now we found that when you look at the ESR of a capacitor with a network analyzer or with a tester, and when you expose it to DC, you get even higher piezoelectric resonances. So now we have another phenomena that the DC is affecting the piezoelectricity of the device. Again, don't ask me why, I really don't know, I'm just reporting the fact. So this is... That is a problem. Uh, at low frequency, do you have the same behavior? Because uh, I was just... Uh, no, 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 I'm, I'll show you. No, no, no. Oh. This is at high frequency. Yes, yes. Now, there have been papers on this, but I, sh I must say that the resonances that you see, one has to very carefully uh, beware that they also depend on how the capacitor is being held in the fixture and the circuit around it. Because when you talk about resonance, uh, you can't talk about something which is detached from the environment. How well it is well, uh, uh, welded down or attached to the PCB board, uh, whether there's some force on it, what is the electrical circuit around it, whether it contains uh, inductors or capacitors. So all these might affect it. So I'm not impressed that much by the size or the a or the magnitude of these uh, ESR, but the phenomena is there, 
And as you can see, it's primarily in this region. This is now related to what I've said, that when you put capacitor in parallel, it is well known that in some cases you, get, you start to get oscillation. So part of this oscillation is probably due also to this piezoelectric effect, because piezoelectric means that you have a sort of mechanical resonance that when exposed to a, a excitation, it starts to vibrate and maybe it's affecting the capacitor around it. So this is a phenomena which is real, unexplored, really unexplored. I'm just giving you some basic material. So now, here is something we did. So I'm, I can sign on this one. Okay. So, <laughs> so here, this is just a preparation. This is the part here of the uh, network analyzer, the Omnicorn, measurement we made by a student of mine. Uh, this is the fixture for measuring impedances, and we have three capacitors here, all are film. And the reason that I've put here film is just to make sure that I have a reference in which I don't see piezoelectricity with the same circuit, okay? So here it is. Now, this is the inductive part. Here it is. And this is the, excuse me, this is the capacitive part. This is a capacitor. And this is the ESR. And the ESR here is for different voltages, up to 350 volt. These are film capacitor, it's an MKP type, I guess, capacitor. And what we see, this is just uh, because the resolution, the, the filter was not uh, uh, narrow enough. This is why you have this. This has nothing to do with phenomena we're talking about. This is a matter of the analyzer, just when you reduce the filter, size to say one hertz or less, then you have to wait half a, half a day until it uh, finishes the analysis. So here we see it's just straight. Also, no DC effect on the ESR. OK, I think you have asked this. No DC effect for a film capacitor. Everything is fine. Everything is dandy. But if you, you replace this with an X7R, see what you get. Not in this part here, but here you get all this noise, which is piezoelectric effect. Now, this is for different DC voltages. Again, you see, we see the ESR is changing. This is a zoomed uh, picture to see better the uh, effect. So we see here how ESR is going up with the uh, bias. And uh, here are the, these oscillations. So this is a real effect. It uh, evoked at high frequencies, close to the resonance. Maybe it has to do with the resonance. But this is something that really needs more research. There's not much we can say about it, except that it's there. And uh, in, in some cases, I guess, it may sort of uh, show up as, oh, here up as a, uh, you know, sinking uh, PCB. Okay, this is now sort of covering the characteristics of the capacitor. And now I'm going into the issue of modeling. How to model a nonlinear capacitor, typically a ferroelectric capacitor. Now, vendors are giving us this type of information. They're not giving much details, but I can sort of decipher what's going on. Number one, they give us this incremental small signal capacitance measured by DC biasing plus AC superimposed, in this particular case, 0.5%, a 0.5 volts. Then, they give us this curve, also capacitance, 
here AC voltage up to 2 volt. This is a capacitor with a higher voltage. The reason they don't go to a higher voltage is because, I guess, losses become very high, so they don't go to higher voltage. And this is a large signal, no bias. And here you got something different, entirely different, okay? And uh, it goes up, and then it goes down. And uh, so what's going on here? And um, this is typical to the plus two and plus three. We don't see it in the power electric uh, material, the NPO, COG, okay? So the question is, what is going on? But a more basic question is, what is the real model of a capacitor? Is this the state space equation of a capacitor? C, changing with voltage dVdt, or this is the real equation of a capacitor? C, V times V, derivative of which, which ends up as this equation. There are two, two possibilities here. So what, what's going on? It, should we use this? This is very important. Very important for simulation. Very important for calculation. Very important if the capacitor is indeed uh, voltage dependent. Now the answer is that really capacitor is not a fundamental parameter. It is a matter of definition. A fundamental parameter is the relationship between Q and V and this goes down or goes back to the polarization and electric field, which for a given capacitor translate into Q and V. Linear capacitors have this behavior, the straight line. Nonlinear capacitor have this line, and I'm not showing the hysteresis, which is not related to our discussion here. So this is this is the curve. Now you can define different capacitances. You can define a local capacitance, which is the derivative here, or here, or here, or here. And obviously it's changing. And this is what we see in the plots. They are changing. Or you can define a total capacitance. That is the ratio between the charge here to the voltage here. This slope. This is another capacitance. Or you can define a large signal capacitance around a given point. Suppose this is the operating point, and you have a large signal. <coughs> Once you have this large signal, obviously this slope for this signal is different. And this will be the CAC, as I call it, the large signal capacitance. So, Capacitance is not a fundamental parameter. It is something that you define, depend on this relationship. So the difference between these two curves is that this one is the small signal, while this one on the right is for large signal. And large signal at a given point around zero. Around other points, this will be different, of course. Okay, so this is one sort of area that the information is given. So we are pretty much limited. If you'd like to do a good, you know, study and see in cases like resonant converters and other things and other uh, application, uh, you are pretty much limited by the information that you have available from the vendors. That very limited. So the point is that once you understand that the fundamental issue here is Q as a function of V, describing this device or this element, then you can define various capacitances and then go on from there and I'm going to discuss it. So for example, 
If I start with this definition of total capacitance, I end up with this state space equation. So this is a correct equation if you put here the total capacitance. And it breaks down into these two uh, terms. On the other hand, if you are defining capacitance as the derivative, which is this derivative here, manipulating this and sort of taking the time derivative, you end up with this. So this and this are correct, except that here you have to use the derivative or the local capacitance, and here you have to use the total capacitance. As it turns out, there is, a, of course, a relationship between the two, and this equation here in the middle is how to get the total from the derivative. Okay, once you know one, you can do the other. So, I've already said it, both models are correct, but you cannot say just capacitance, you have to say what capacitance do you mean? And then, of course, you can get use this or this thing. So, this is what the vendors are giving in a limited way, because this large, this is the AC capacitance is given for a certain area, a certain range, zero DC bias, while here we are given the derivative as a function of the uh, voltage on it. So how can you get one from the other? The key is to get this curve, this one. Once you get this, you know everything. This is not given. But it's very easy to get it. Once, for example, you have this information, you can take the integral of it. You, you have this derivative, take the integral, and you get the charge, and then you got this relationship between uh, the charge and the voltage. And then you can use this equation to get the total capacitance if you wish. You can do it, and I like very much spice and simulation, by simulation, you can digitize this curve, put it into what's called G-table in PSPI, that is a element that has a current output as a function of the input, put here a ramp, and this will be the integral, and it produces you the curve. And here is implementation in PSPICE. Uh, this is the G table. It's a current source. What is driven it, it's not a ramp. Actually, it's time. You can put time as a parameter in PSPICE. And here is the digitized derivative or the local capacitance. That is the value of here as a function of voltage. This is this table, in this G table. This is a behavioral model that PSPICE has. You can write a table, and it'll produce output as a function of the excitation here, which is time, and the table, giving you the back, giving you back the derivative or the local capacitance, and then you can use the integral function, STD, is an integral function, and this gives you the Q. Okay, so this can is easily uh, done, and I think I have later on I have uh, results of this thing. Now there is a question here, which I'm going now to explore, is what is the reason that you find in some cases that you have here a hump. This goes very nicely with DC, starts with a high capacitance, you put DC, and the, the capacitance goes down slowly or fastly. But here, all of a sudden, you have here a maximum. Okay? So let me explain this, which is important to really understand the underlying 
uh, issues that we have here. So what I'm going to do next is to show how we can construct actually the Q from this curve that we just talked about with the hump. To do that, we realize that this point, what does it mean? This point means that there is an AC, large signal, around zero. Here it is. And this is this point here. This is the AC signal. This point here, this is this. So, knowing the capacitance, which is the slope, and knowing the voltage, you can reconstruct this point. And then you can go to this point. Again, this is a larger amplitude. This is this amplitude here, V2. And look at the value of the capacitance and reconstruct this point from this equation. So we can reconstruct Q from this humped value. Here it is. And once we have Q, I'm going now around the thing. Once you have Q as a function of V, I can reconstruct CD for on my own, starting from AC capacitance to Q. Taking the derivative, I can get CD. And then I can compare it to what the vendor is showing. This is what the data sheet is showing, and this is what I got. And as you already you see very clearly, we have a hump here, we don't have a hump here. Why is this? Well, one reason is maybe my digitization was not uh, very good. Yeah, I was a little lazy, I didn't get a fine picture, but there's no question that, that the behavior is different. And as it turns out, this reconstructed value is the correct one. And what the data sheet is showing is incorrect. Why is that? Why is that? The reason is that, well, let me have an introduction here and then I'll, I'll, I'll summarize it. Let's look back at the history of this curve. As you notice around zero, this curve doesn't start like this. It starts with a slope which is low. And only then it sort of goes up. This is also very well known in ferromagnetic material, or ferrites. There's the initial permeability, and then there's the permeability. So it goes this way. So this is now the actual Q. It's not going from zero up. It is something like that. Now, when you excite it with the large signal, you go from here to here, from here to here. Here it is. Small AC, larger AC, larger AC, larger AC. And these are these points here. What happens to the slope? which is the definition of capacitance, goes up because the slope is going up. But notice, as you pass this point, the slope is going down. So for large signal, at the very beginning, you see an increase in capacitance because you are moving on this part here. The slope is going up, up, up. And then as you reach this point, the slope is going down. So this is exactly what we are seeing here. Now why is it that we don't see it here? The reason is that the excitation here is 0.5 volt, doesn't say, this 0.5 volt RMS. This is a big signal. <coughs> As it turns out, the resolution here is better than 0.5 because we see here this is 0 0.4, 1. So we are here is with a very fine resolution. So this was actually created with a fine resolution, while this, because of the large signal, smeared out this phenomenon of the peak. So if we would have 
measured the derivative or local capacitance with very fine resolution, we would have seen here a peak too, which is important for small signals. <coughs> and only then we, we see the, the drop here. Okay, I think it's interesting. I'm excited about it. Okay, so now let's go about how do we analyze situation in which we have capac nonlinear capacitor. Which capacitance to use? Because we can define it different ways. Now for application like charging a capacitor, a nonlinear capacitor by a voltage source or a, uh, another capacitor, we usually would like to work with the total capacitance, total charge, and this would be the parameter used. Let me just sidetrack a little bit here and say the following, just to give you, I'd say, motivation here. All what I'm saying is also relevant to the nonlinear capacitors <coughs> of MOSFET transistors. MOSFET, IGBT, gallium nitrate, all silicon carbide, all have nonlinear capacitance which are voltage dependent. I am concentrated here on the uh, ceramic capacitors, but energy wise, which I'm going to discuss now, is very relevant because, for example, if you have an output capacitance of a transistor starting with, I don't know, one nanofarad and with bias, it's 100 picofarad. You want to know how much energy is stored there. One nanofarad is incorrect, and 100 picofarad is incorrect. You have to consider the fact that this is a nonlinear capacitor, and each point is changing, charging differently. I'm going to discuss it in a minute. So what I'm just stressing here, that I'm not discussing semiconductors, but this is very, very relevant. Uh, to the question of losses, of uh, energy stored in, in, in this parasitic capacitance, uh, the Miller effect of the capacitance, etc. Ah, there is a coffee break, but we are enjoying it so much, yeah, so we don't so want. <laughs> 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 okay. <laughs> I think I'm enjoying it more than they are. <laughs> so. <laughs> Okay, yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll take a break. We'll take a break. Okay, just one minute. Okay. <laughs> so, let me go on here. I'll finish this part very quickly. For resonant, uh, for PWM converter, switch mode converter, of obviously we are interested in the small signal because we have small signal. The ripple is small and uh, this is the parameters that we want to work with. In resonant converters, we do have to worry about the CAC, the large signal capacitance, because this is the stuff that will affect, or this is the parameter that will affect the behavior of this uh, resonant circuit. You cannot use the local capacitance, which is incorrect. So, I'm now going into energy issues, so therefore, uh, since she alerted us to the break, let's take a break, f 15 minutes too, and uh, then um, we'll continue from there, okay?